Hello, hello. Uh, Halos here. Today, it's going to do a quick video on uh, structure one and structure two. You're going to come across me saying this in a few other videos that I'll be making and I have made in the past. Um, so what I just wanted to do is just do a quick clarification on exactly what I mean so you know what I'm looking at when I'm saying these, these certain things. So let me just bring up a slide which is going to demonstrate what I'm looking at first. So here, um, what I call structure one, structure two is basically just waves in the market. And I'm going to identify waves in the market that stand out more in a trending market. And it's going to be a way that I can sort of identify my overall structure in the market if it's making higher lows or lower highs. Um, and then I'm going to be able to use that to give myself a directional bias. Okay, so what we're looking at here is that this is just really nice, clean, simple market movement. And as we know, when we look at the charts, it's never this this clean. But what I'm mainly looking at is trying to find a origin. So this is going to be like my my starting point. Okay, my start of the move. This could be from after we've had like a, a breaker structure to retest and then the market can just start doing like a trending structure. But let's just say this is a starting point. Market moves up and then pushes and makes a, a higher high and a higher close. It's a very important that I'm not just looking at a break as in like a wick higher than a previous high, but I want to see a candle body closing above there. Th this is just before I start as well. This is not on a specific time frame. This happens on all time frames. The market is, is very fractal in nature. And depending on the volume that's present in the market, you'll see this on every time frame, and then you're going to see some that maybe it looks like ranging structure, but you'll see that there's still structure one or structure two or structural um, patterns on on even the smaller time frame. So I'll go to the charts afterwards and then just just show you how how what what I mean by that. But the main things here is that what I'm looking for is I'm looking for price to make a push up, make a higher high higher close, and then have see a pullback, a support form. And then from this support, whether it's going to be a supply or it's going to be like a liquidity grab, but I want to see a pullback. And then from this area, maybe it's even order block, price can consolidate here for a little bit. But then from this area, I want to see it push up, break this high and close higher. What that's going to do is give me structure. I've got a higher, higher, higher close. I've got a pullback, a higher low, and then it pushes up, makes a new higher, higher, higher close. When I've got two structures, what I'm looking for is just the same thing. I'm looking for it now from that high, the second higher, higher, higher close to pull back, make a higher low, and then do it same thing again. Then what I've got here is disregard the name for just one second. Let's just pretend those names don't exist. We've just got basic structure in the market. The reason I name it one and two is that when I say structure one, it's just my most recent. So say this is where where price action is currently. It's just my most recent low that was actually made a significant higher high and a higher close from it. That would just be then called, that's my first structure or my primary structure. It's just the structure that's closest to current price. Secondary structure is, as the name implies, second most recent structure to current price. All of these zones are going to be structures and counting back as in like counting back from one to two is really just to orientate yourself on what the current conditions are. As in, are we trending up or are we not trending or are we trending down? Okay. Now, what happens if price is making a higher low, but actually failing to close higher, then this isn't to me structure. It's not even like it's a double bottom, but it's it's creating the support. But if price is testing here, testing here, testing here, and then coming back down to these lows, I don't trust them to be looking for trades off of them. Because if it is closing underneath or breaking these lows, usually, usually it's going to test this structure, either the top of it, or if it can close inside the structure, it can then test easily the bottom of the first structure. Okay, now if I just go over to the next slide, 
I'll show, I'll do, I'm going to do a separate video on drawing structure, structural variations, stacked and separated structures. But now like what, when we get a, a simple pullback is just when we pull back simply this first structure. A, a complex pullback is when we get more of these complex waves down into first structure because people get confused in these bits here. But I want to make a video specifically on this. I want to keep this one nice and quick and short. And main thing is just understanding what I mean by first and second structure. It's, it's the one that's closest to price and then second closest to price. So I'm going to jump over to the charts now. Here we've got, uh, this is this gold chart, and this is nice and clean. Really, really, really nice and clean. For a trend, if I've got a trending structure, as in we've gone, made a higher, higher, higher close, a higher low, a second higher, higher, higher close, and a second higher low, now I've got confirmed structure, or this is a trending, this is a bullish trend at the moment. It's a it's trending price action. Now, I'm, I'm fine with this trend to be continuing. Even if I break first structures low, I'm fine for this to give me a deeper pullback to second structure. I still consider the market flow up until we're breaking below second structure. Then I've got a problem with this current current price action. Now you'll see this you'll see this on one time frame and then maybe you'll look at a higher time frame and say, look, it's just a pullback to a higher time frame first structure. Yes, that is true. That is absolutely correct. But let's just have a look and see how volume plays uh, a part in this. So you can see price, we're going to use this as a starting point. Price moves up, comes down, a little pullback, just consolidating here. Nothing, nothing really to see. So at the moment, until I've got a higher, higher, higher close, I don't have anything, I don't have a higher low yet. Once price leaves this area, and now we're breaking above this high, now I've got a new higher low. Price pushes up, comes back, pushes up again. Now I can say, look, I've got structure, I've got bullish structure in the market. At this time, I would say that this is my first structure, and this would be considered my second structure. Now price can pull back, and so it can pull back all the way to here, and I'll still say I am bullish in the market. There, there are factors in in, um, in addition to this, of course, what's happening on the higher time frames or lower time frames. But just in general, general terminology, I'm fine for it to pull back to second structure. As you see, in this case, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't pull back. What it does is just it pulls back, creates a little support. Here's a support candle, pushes up again, comes down, retests that support candle, and then moves on, makes a new high, high, high close from that. So if I was drawing my structures and keeping in real time, I would shift this and say, this is now my first structure. And then I would lift this one and say, that's my second structure. I'm just going with the flow. Price then continues, makes a new higher low. I'll be a little bit more um, quicker on this. Price makes up, new higher, high, high close, comes down, forms a support, higher, high, high close, comes down, forms a support. No higher, high, high close yet. It's just sort of ranging then we push up and make a high, high, high close. So I can say at this current present time, let me just, let me just so not to confuse your eyes, remove that. At this present time, I'd be saying that this here is my most recent structure, my first structure. It's the structure that's closest to price. Price is closed higher, higher than these wicks here. And it's closed higher. Second structure is, oh, where have we done? Okay, move that. So that's my second structure. I'm absolutely fine with price coming down to second structure. And in fact, I actually really like to see price come down to that second structure because that gives me the best trade opportunities. Now, if I was looking at this, price could then push up, sort of ranging a little bit, coming down, retesting the lows, close is lower. They actually close lower than these wicks. So that there is thinking that, all right, maybe first structure is not going to hold. Maybe though, it's going to come down to second structure. That's going to give me the better opportunity. Price then pushes across, starts to retest second structure. Nice, great, that gives you the best opportunities there. If you've got um, a part of your trading plan, different confirmations, that things that you look for, then you know all of these are gonna tie into a confluence for your, for your, um, your, your trade entries. But just identifying a zone where you can be looking for trades, second structure gives you many, 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 many good opportunities. Price continues, breaks up, hasn't closed higher yet than this wick. So do I, oh, let me make it black. Do I have 
a new higher low. No, I don't. Because this needs to close higher than this wick. So I've got nothing yet. Then once price can actually close higher, right here, now I can say, all right, well now I can shift this up. And this becomes my first structure. And this whole area, this is a kind of a version of a stacked or overlapping structures. I'm going to cover these these in a bit more detail, but you can see now like there's really impulsive pushes. These are like news events, and you can see that the candles are getting a bit smaller, a little bit more. Um, the volume just seems to be getting dying. This this can be indicative of uh, we're approaching like a resistance on a higher time frame. Something maybe it's happening over here to the left. Maybe something's happening like monthly, weekly. Um, but we can see that something's starting to slow down. Until though that second structure is broken, I am maintaining a bullish bias. Let me just remove this. Now we sort of just we're just we're just ranging after here. We haven't like I don't trust this low because what has it achieved? Has it broken and make a new high, high, high close? No, it doesn't. Has this one? No, it hasn't. So this still is my main structural low. My first structure is in this whole zone. This is my zone that I've got most interest in. Now, if you're, a, uh, say this is the one hour chart, if you're a, an hour time frame trader, maybe you're just saying I'm consolidating, I don't have much to do. But then if there's low volume in the market, you're always gonna find a trend, but maybe you just need to look at different time frames, and that's where other time frames are going to, to, to come in handy. Okay, so let's just say, let's just break this down even further and just say, well, how can I apply this to um, a lower time frame? Say I want to I want to find a trade in here. There's going to be another video on, uh, or maybe there's another video by the time you watch this. But uh, when I look at like particular sessions, if we're actually looking at a particular session, let's just look at this this bullish run up. We we know that we get like a bias in a particular session. So this pink area is representing the London session. The Asian sessions is blue. The little yellow is that that Frankfurt Open, like pre London. We've got New York um, and London overlap and there's olive color. And then when it's just green here, this is just New York by itself. If we're just looking at this London session where we have sort of respected the low, we've pulled a, there's a liquidity candle, we've respected the low of that, we've pulled the liquidity, done liquidity candle, done a retest. And then now what happens is quite often we just get um, London moving, trending, okay? So how could I try to get myself into a trade here just look at your structures again. So maybe the hours just ranging, 30 minutes starting to see, look, I've got a liquidity grab, I've got a retest. I've, now maybe if we're breaking this high, I've got a chance of, of going up to here, up to the Asian high, maybe refilling these wicks or just going to the high of that one hour range. If we isolate this area and just pull up here, I'm just gonna go straight to the like one minute chart and just say, show you like how the structures tie into it, each other. Let's go to, this is, see down time here is UK time. So eight o'clock, this is the uh, UK, London open, uh, precisely this candle here. But look at this, if before, this doesn't actually make that much difference to higher time frames, but look at the structure, right? Look at how it goes up, comes down, comes up, high, 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 close, comes down to the low, comes up. Now, now we've got, this is now, this, this low here is structure one, structure two, or structure two would be down here somewhere. Price comes down, comes up, does it close higher? No, so it's just ranging. But now this one closes higher. So this is your next structure that's closest to price. Does a little retest, pushes up, comes down, consolidates. And we're, every now and then the algorithms are gonna throw, throw you a second structure pullback. So at the moment, it's just like this. This is all consolidation, pushes up, comes down, comes up, comes down. And look where this wick goes to. This is your second structure at that time because you would have had first structure and now second structure. Second structure until it's broken is maintaining the trend. We consolidate for a bit, then the structure eventually starts to continue, pushes up, comes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Little pullback. Nothing's actually breaking the high. So you're not looking at these lows. Or well, this this low here is fine, but you're not looking at this as a low because this, this low hasn't achieved anything, hasn't closed higher. So you're looking at this as your low and then this is your second structure. So what you'd be doing is just going to the flow. Move this up. That's your first structure. And then the second one is this area. 
I say it all the time, little fake out. So we can start to read these patterns a little bit more, but it makes sense that second structure gives you the better opportunities, gives you the lower risk reward, uh, sorry, lower risk, but better reward because from here, stop loss under here somewhere, just targeting the high. If we can break the high, continue that structure, then, then we just continue on our way. Okay, so that's what I mean. That's what I mean by first and second structure. It's the closest structure to current price and then the second the second most recent structure. But I think that's gonna be a fairly fairly quick summary of what I'm looking for. I'll do a bit more detail into what were the different sort of pullbacks and, and how we can trade this. Um, but in general, that's structure one and structure two. Okay, great. Thank you for watching. And if you've got any comments, just leave them in the comment box and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.